Okay, I'm uh, sitting outside. It's a very nice day in the autumn in October in Belgium. I had a very nice week at Siemens. Now what I'm going to do is working on some um, price of electricity issues. These involve database issues, so I'm going to work on a Philippines case, but that really doesn't matter. And I'm going to turn the uh, video on and off when I think there's a, something useful to do here. So the first thing is we have prices, uh, hourly prices, uh, and we have a, uh, a, a adjustment of a date and time. Now, if you just to show you how this works, if you if you if you have a date, so one one two thousand sixteen and you have an hour, you can just put the uh, date plus the hour divided by 24, and then you can press Control-1 and uh, get the date and the time. That shouldn't be that big a deal. Okay, now if you wanted to go back and just get this to be just the date, in case you're, we're going to do some match index on some dates, then of course you can put a round of this to zero, and then you shift control. You know, uh, if I put control F1 and do the same thing, uh, now we uh, just get the zero hour, but it's the same as just shift control three, just the date. Okay, now um, the uh, first thing, so I've got the dates from 2016 all the way down. This is a pain, three six thousand lines. And then we've got some dates from 2014. Now, unfortunately, I can't automate the download for the Philippines. So that's, we'll talk about automated, so automating some other things. And in this, so in this video, we'll have some graphs, uh, graphic issues. We'll have some database issues. And we'll have a little bit of a, a downloading issues. Now, if I want to uh, go down to this one, I think the first thing to do is Alt E I S, Enter Tab six three three eight four. That's the first thing, and of course I did it wrong. And uh, Alt E I S, Enter Alt C for columns. Tab six three. Three, eight, four. I tried to see how fast I could do it, and it obviously didn't work well. And then I can just now. This one is something, of course, people who don't use the mouse on this, I, I don't quite understand. But uh, uh, so we have 2006, and um, uh, uh, I'm going to just uh, why. No, I can't do that. Um, this is going to give me zeros. I wanted to click when it hits to 2007. Maybe we'll, we could do some conditional formatting, but I'm not going to do that. Here's why. Yes, I will. We'll, we'll do the conditional formatting. Now let's, of course, make a tab color. Now when you make a tab color, and I want to say, well, if I'm bringing it from 2006, I uh, we'll make it red. And did the, uh, this went to 2013, 9, 18. <sighs> Sorry, and this is, uh, oh, it, it, it worked just, I think, uh, just about perfectly. If I would have uh, uh, gone down a few more, uh, well, I was wrong. Nope. 2000. 18. Do we? Oh, God. Uh, no. I, uh, just, just a minute. So, ah, oh, shit. I'm going to stop this. Okay, well, just quickly, let's do the sec same thing for the next one. So, 2014. Uh, now this, I'll just tell you, I had some date problems, and I created a date, a thing that converted from a European to a U.S. date. So, sorry, I'm in my U.S. computer because my old one was stolen. But now, the the um, uh, if we count this, so this time we have seven two nine four, 
and we can put 7294 to remember it, you wouldn't have to. Alt E I S, Alt C, tab, 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 7294, and it's not going to work because I need a 1. Uh, so I'll just put a 1, Alt E I S, Alt C, tab, 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 7294, enter. Okay, and then we can uh, copy those. So we'll get the same things. We'll get the date for 2000 and uh, for the 2014, and we'll get the uh, price for 2014. Okay, and we can. Uh, uh, I guess on this one we need something from 2014, so I'm going to put our little uh, month of the year this time and double click. Okay, and then uh, we can test whether this uh, 9, this was this A thing, and we got just, we, we went all the way to the end. So 2015, we have. Uh, 6120 series so this is getting re very repetitive and I'm going to stop uh, the video okay now what I did was uh, I colored the sheets this might be kind of obvious to you but I think a big deal in this uh, <sighs> generic macros thing is that uh, this macro that uh, automatically goes to the cells and colors the sheets from the sheet name because then we'll we'll be able to see in our database which which sheet it came from explicitly and what you do is I just I just open the uh, generic macro and then we go to co uh, color cells from other colors now this is going to take a little while in this one because we have so much data that doesn't matter um, in your normal sheets it will just take a, a second or two Okay, so I'm going to turn the machine off as soon as I do that. Okay, so that's the uh, conditional formatting. Uh, the, the sheet, the, the uh, tab color formatting. How's that? Now, to do the conditional formatting, I'm going to save this for a minute. Uh, and. Okay, and let's see how, how big the file is. I want to show you, let's see if conditional formatting really makes the uh, files bigger. Now, uh, if we go to our uh, sheet, so this is in electricity materials, and it's going to be in spot prices. I'm going to show you where the file is if we go to uh, Philippines. Right now, our file is 6884. Okay, now we're going to put some conditional formatting in here. And when we put some conditional formatting in, we're going to do uh, the following. Okay, now this, I, the, the, the slowness of it is another matter. We, uh, control A, this stupid thing here. So. Okay, um, let's, for the conditional formatting, let's go and do something. So for the conditional formatting, go to new rule, and we're going to just use a formula, and let's go to the year in C1, okay, and press F4 a couple of times. We just want it on the column equal to 006, okay? And then if that's going to happen, then we'll format it Let's get some kind of light color here, maybe a blue, okay? And I should have put an equal sign here. And when you do that, uh, uh, we, uh, whoops, okay, let's try it again. Get all the cells, go to conditional formatting. What did I do wrong? Uh, I went to, let's go to manage rules, we have all the cells, we edit the rule, and we say the year of dollars, and of course I meant to put 
put dollar sign on the C of the one. So if you were saying, why in the hell did that idiot do that? You were right. And you press OK. And we apply it. And we get all this. So now let's let's just save this file. Uh, Control S. <laughs> It, don't worry about what I just did. This is this old thing I have that I have to remove the uh, uh, macros from. So if we just, now we just saved it again, and let's look at the sheet, and it's 6884. It's the same size. So these people who give you some crap about the conditional formatting, this is this thing that's causing me the problem, about that getting bigger now. I wish you could copy the conditional formatting so we can make it 2007, 2008, 2009, and so forth, but we can't, so I'm just going to pause. Okay, so um, all I did was add these conditional formattings, and uh, it uh, didn't increase the size of the, pro the, the thing. I've got a, a, a file, and we've got to rename it now. Okay. And um, the next thing we're going to do is we have these things in pesos uh, per megawatt hour. Um, and I'm just pressing F11 to get a graph. Um, we're going to convert these uh, to USD uh, per kWh just so we can... Uh, uh, um, just so we can... Uh, compare them with other markets. Now, there's a um, nice little website here that gives you the, uh, the, the exchange rate. So I, I already put it here, but we might want to update the exchange rates. And then when we get it, we get something like uh, this. And we're going to have to uh, somehow try to automate this. So we can um, uh, put the exchange rates. We'll put them in a in a in a flat file, and uh, after we put them in a flat file, we'll we'll put them over. So let's see how to do this. So first thing is just to let's let's make a uh, new macro. Okay, and let's say read exchange. Okay, and create this macro. Now, when we do this, the first thing we'll do is make sure that now this this thing has a, if we press Control F3, it's exchange URL, okay? So uh, let's make this macro. I'm kind of umming too much, but dot open, and we put range. And we put exchange URL. Okay. And we need two. That's the first thing we need. And, and before we do that, we put, should put a, a base book equal active dot uh, name. And I'm going to delete the existing one. So we put down, um, we have sheets, exchange rate, uh, dot delete. So we don't have to uh, work. And uh, let's put application. dot display alerts equal false. Now I'm being very confident when I do all of that. So, so that's the first thing we do. And then once we read this, then what we're going to do is move this to the other sheet and then we'll close it. So we're going to eventually put um, uh, uh, temp book equal uh, workbooks uh, uh, equal active is the same thing we just did workbook 
the name. And at the very end, we'll we'll build, we'll put clo uh, ten workbooks temp book dot close but before that we're going to copy this and we're going to copy this into a new sheet and uh, we're going to copy this num sheets now make you have to this is what I keep making the mistake in usually equal active equal sheets dot count okay so we'll do this and now I'm gonna uh, uh, have to just temporarily uh, do this now we can uh, assign this little macro to our read exchange right and we'll ah oh, we have a debug now that's and okay exchange rate exchange rates okay and so here why don't we do this and you know what we we're gonna do over here is active dot name equal So that what we do here is 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 simply obviously if we deleted it then we're going to rename it okay now we we don't have that right yet because we're still going to have to move the sheet so let's uh, let's do this now and of course I uh, so I push this in and then it should go to the uh, file now I might be on a very slow internet so I'm gonna just pause okay um, the internet got really slow and I had a problem but uh, uh, the macro is well fine it's not a big problem so this is this workbooks open and what you do here is uh, um, we just copy and paste special as uh, values after we uh, have it and then we put it in the other sheet and then what I did is I switched it to uh, a manual calculation I don't think that even helped but I tried okay so that's that now let's do something a little different and let's uh, reformat the exchange rates okay Now, what we'll do here is first let's uh, put some dates in. I would like to, uh, uh, we have the end of each month. So we know that the first uh, thing we have here, luckily, corresponds to the uh, prices, is because our prices started in uh, 2006. Okay. Um, we'll put the uh, 2006 in here um, after we do this let's put uh, <sighs> one, uh, month one EO month uh, how about we'll put a date Uh, year month a day and then we'll put a EO month now I haven't done this before and shift control 3 now we'll put e EO month I have done this before of course uh, so shift control 3 so we have our you know what we need is a um, we need a we need to reformat these and do it in an automatic way. I should have used some sort of, uh, uh, this is enough. Okay. 
uh, once we get these exchange rates like this, then we can put the exchange rates right next to the uh, prices, which won't be a big deal. And we can put over here, actually, we can put a month end. And I think we can put EO month just like this. comma zero shift control three and then we can just uh, use a lookup function to match the exchange rates and finally we can put the uh, price in USD okay so let's see how we'll do this now uh, I'm going to switch it off for just a minute so I don't waste your time. Okay, I had to do something a little bit different. Um, in another one, in another f uh, 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 a video, I explained this making your own match functions. And this time, what I did is I said, okay, if we have this exchange rates, you know, let's find anything from 2006 to 2015 and find the row number. That's what the first thing we're going to need. Now to do that, you can make it, if you make your own match function, you can say, well, let's, uh, I said it with a multiple test. So what we're going to do is test anything from 2015, six to 2015. And to do that, the first thing is you'll need to read them in both. So we have two lookup values and a column range. And we take the difference between 2015, 2006, and go around and put 2006, 2007, blah, blah, blah. That's what this does. Then we go around the rows. I only went to 200 rows. We could go through more. And then we look up and see if our test value, and our test value is, is, is whatever is in the, the cell. We go through cell one by one. And then we see if it's equal to the value. If it is, then we stop and say we found the row, and that's the end. That's the function. I did it very quickly. If you want to look at the other uh, videos, I think this is, 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 is really quite important. Now, once we have that, then we can put, uh, then let's put match again. But this time, we've got, we know the row number, so that we're going to match this lookup value against the entire row and uh, uh, the row we're going to do is we're going to use this row 18. Now we won't do it like this. Uh, we better put comma put comma zero. We, we, we have to do that and that's going to give us the uh, that's going to that 11 this is the column. Okay, so this is a little bit advanced, okay, but uh, so we put column, and then once we have the column of the row, then we, we've got it easy. Then we can uh, match the December, January, uh, uh, February, so we can put the uh, date and put uh, MMMMMM and, whoops text of course not date okay and then we can uh, that now we can put another match uh, uh, or actually we once we have that uh, let's put uh, a row so we'll find the row now this if it's uh, January February August and, and so forth, we'll find the row. This will be another match. We'll put match and look up this. And this time, luckily, we can uh, hope it's always in A and put comma zero. Okay. And now we have the row and the column. Then we can put the value. And the value is just going to be index. And we click on the entire sheet. And we go to the row first and then the column. Now, the reason that's important to do it like this is when we delete the name exchange rates and redo it, we'd have references if we don't do it like this. So we have to use all this match index indirect. Remember my friend Victor 
I said he's going to name his two dogs he's going to buy match and index. And I think if he gets a third one, he should name it indirect. Because instead of using this 18 like this, what we'll do is put uh, uh, indirect. And then we uh, go up to the, our sheet name. Now that's always going to be the same. And then we put the... Uh, 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 well, we need... Excuse me for that. Oh, we, we need a, uh, a thing here because I idiotically put a space in in uh, in, uh, in in the exchange rate and then we put it like this we finish it and then we put a uh, what row number we had f4 and we put a colon not a semicolon and we oops Come on, and then we put the row number in again. And then we close the indirect. Okay, so that still did it, and we need an F4 on this one. So the, the row number, the column number changes when we change the dates. We didn't have 2016 yet. We can uh, double click on this this is just the text command text and give the mmmm the row now this is what we're going to we can use the indirect again and the and then we we go up to the exchange rates f4 and we have to do the same thing that's good we get to practice isn't it and we put one at the end. Uh, and then we, we need to put, uh, we're going to assume it's all as column A. So we put uh, uh, A colon A. A, close it. Okay, and we have the row number. And I... The row number is going to be different depending on our, our, um, our, our, our row. And then finally we put the, and I, oof, what did I do wrong? <sighs> okay. Ah, and which we have to uh, apparently press the F4 button here to get our, to get our things okay i hope you think that was worth it and i'm stopping the video now and going to the next subject okay this is almost too easy to do but let's just to, to once we get it um we can just use the lookup okay look up and we can look up on the month end go to our exchange rates Oops, our, our reformatting of the exchange rates. Mm -hmm. Just click on the entire column and then click on the entire column here. Okay, shift control one, and then we can get our price from, uh, 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 um, of course, I did it in the, the wrong uh, page, but then we get the price in USD. So I'm going to stop this and put it in the right page. What an idiot. Okay, now we'll uh, uh, get the, if, if we want to get a graph of this, I just uh, put it in. We can press shift control down uh, and then shift F8 to m mark the selection. Shift control up, F11, hopefully, and then we can get the price. Now what we'll do is look at prices in individual days. We'll look at moving averages. We'll look at all sorts of different, different uh, uh, prices. It looks like, uh, oh yeah, it puts the, um, hmm. can, can we uh, format this axis just as a date? Um, well, I don't know. I'm not going to, I'm going to uh, worry about that. We can reformat the, 
the the dates okay oh shit okay i'm stopping now uh this this uh, uh, uh doesn't make sense uh, it makes sense what a ridiculous thing to say but the in the context of this sh price should be with compared to gas prices and to uh, coal prices and the gas prices let's put in usd per mmbtu and the coal prices okay mmbtu okay and the coal prices we'll also put in usd for MMBTU, okay, and this you, we can then compute things like a spark spread, a uh, dark spread. Sometimes people, I guess, that call the coal, you could adjust it for environmental things. We won't do that, but uh, uh, and then you can evaluate the profit on a on a different kind of uh, coal plant, uh, evaluate availability. Uh, benefits and costs you can do just a whole bunch of things once you have both the price and the variable cost and that's what i was kind of saying the price standing alone without looking at what the actual cost of production is really doesn't give you that much so um so that's what we're going to do next now uh to do this let's go and um uh, what, what, what we'll get is the uh, if you go to chapter one you go to data retrieval if you go to this thing called commodity price analysis that's where we get i think the nice um thing from the from the uh, world bank now uh i put some other stuff here we can get the forecasts of the prices from the world bank and a whole bunch of things but this pink data sheet is just wonderful. This is a uh, this. Now I look at this. This is what just happened is interesting. Um, what we have to do is, um, uh, oops, just a minute. I'm getting nervous here. When I do this this kind of thing, I often get this. Now if you, oops, oh it did it itself. So I'm gonna leave it. But uh, I think what you can do is just calculate this range. We can call this the the uh, the exchange row, and what what you need to do is is uh, occasionally you need to update this. So what you do is something very simple. Just make go to a macro in this file and put sub re recalc and this one will put range and exchange I can't even remember what I exchange row I hope that's what I called it uh, dot calculate and you can um, uh, did I call it exchange calculate exchange Oh, great. Okay, exchange row I did. Okay. Now, uh, if you put a a little button here, and let's just go to this sheet and put the exchange. What was this? Oh, come on. Uh, uh, did I call it recalc? Okay, we, we better... Uh, God, I can't believe my memory is going so badly. Recalc, okay. And then you can call this something like update. And it's this is a real pain. It's not my fault. This is Excel's fault, I think. It either should not work. That, that match either should not work or it should just work right. And so if we, if we have this, we might have to uh, put a little update button. And then it will... Uh, it will recalculate at least i think it will so where were we did we uh, 
uh, copy this I think we did but just in case I, I lost oh there was it so this is going to be our uh, pink data pink URL I don't know why they call it pink uh, data so let's make this range you know that it doesn't matter if it's a capital or not control F3 that was so we have the pink URL here and then essentially what we can do is is uh, copy this and it will be almost the same the reason it won't quite be the same is when we read in the pink data uh, let's let's uh, sign macro and edit and we'll call this get pink or something okay and after we put this uh, get pink that sounds a little okay uh, uh, okay we start with all the same thing and we put pink data okay that's all the same and then we put call this the pink URL it doesn't matter uh, 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 and then we can copy that now uh, I, I let's I think this will will all work actually um, and this was uh, pink data Okay, so it should delete the sheet, copy it, and it happens to be that the cell that opens is the monthly sheet. So this this happens to work. So I'm going to uh, pause, and it's going to take a while to do this, but I'm going to go and get the sheet. Now, I have no idea why that went so fast, but it went very quickly, maybe because I had... Uh, uh, I don't know. I really don't know why it, sometimes it goes so quickly and sometimes so slowly. So now we're going to have to do the same the same way we reformatted the the uh, exchange rates. Let's we're going to reformat the pink data. Okay. Now, I'm going to, uh, again, pause it for a minute, and we'll think about some of the issues. What we need to do is, it's luckily this time, the natural gas, um, let's uh, make these wider so we can kind of see what's going on. And I guess, we, we you know, when you reread it in, it's not going to remember that. We have the natural gas in U.S., natural gas in Europe and then we have this liquefied natural gas in in Japan which since we're in the Philippines we'll use that and for the coal we'll use the unfortunately they don't have a, they just have Australian coal and South African coal why don't we use Australian coal hopefully that's kind of like Indonesian coal and uh, uh, we'll be able to get those the only problem is we have these date problems. So we're going to have to, uh, again, start in 2006, look for 2006. I don't think it's going to be, this one's going to be kind of easier. Uh, but I'm going to pause it and just show you what we do. Okay, so this is pretty easy. I, all we did is, is get the same thing from the reformatted uh, exchange rates, where we put in a date and then use the EO month. Now, once we have the EO month, we, what we can do is, is is just put the year. Okay, whoops. Ugh. Tab. Ah, come on. Okay, and then once we put the year in here, we can put an and, and then just a capital M, of course, and then the uh, month. And... Okay, and let's look at the uh, pink data. Um, oh shoot, the phone's going off like that. 
uh, and then we might have a problem with the um, might either have to do text or trim okay no that won't work uh, excuse me I shouldn't be wasting your time on this uh, okay I'm gonna if, if this doesn't work I'm, I'm, I'm turning it off <sighs> And uh, let's just see if this works. So if I want the uh, 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 gas price, as usual, we'll just look at the use the lookup. Okay, I don't know. You know, some people say, "Oh, never use the lookup. Use the use the uh, pivot tables." But what a lot of crap that is. Okay, and, and uh, that did work. It seems to have worked. So uh, that was good news. And then we'll uh, put the coal price in and put equal lookup. I'm kind of happy that this all worked. And look up this one. And then we put the... Uh, we said we're going to take the Australian call. Okay, now we're going to have to do a little adjustment to uh, 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 change the, put this in MMB to use. And the final thing, when we delete the pink data and redo it, we should put, it's almost just what we did up here, just so you uh, practice this. We put pink data and we We'll, uh, over here, instead of look up this, we need to put indirect, and we'll uh, put a uh, single like this, and we put the uh, uh, pink data, and then we, of course, press the F4, another thing, and then we close it and use a and we close the indirect and then we can do the same thing with um, an indirect tab a single quote f4 single quote And I bet you I, uh, let me see, did I do this? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, well, let me uh, pause this and get this right. Okay, I just had forgotten to put a, uh, uh, one of the and signs in. And now this was A and K. And this was, instead of A, this was F. So all we have to do is go to the right and change this K to a F, F, colon, F. Now, we, I suppose we have to hope that the World Bank won't, won't change its format, but we'll just assume that that's very unlikely. And uh, now we have it. So match index indirect again. And let's uh, pause the video because we're going to now convert the coal to MMBT. Now, once we have the coal price, let's go and get the, let's convert it to MMBTU. So you can go to the disk. I suppose I should put these conversions on the uh, website. There's a nice little conversion here, but that doesn't convert the coal because the coal depends on the heat content. So I have a, uh, file called electricity conversions that's going to take longer to uh, and then we have this uh, thing you know this is bad I, I can't believe I uh, haven't uh, uh, 
converted this with a text conversion, but that's natural gas. Let's let's go to the um, uh, we have the oil and gas, crude oil, coal, and we have a unit equals to ki kilojoules, but I don't want kilojoules. So let's go to the uh, fuel units for. Um, Uh, for coal, okay, and we have kBTUs converts to mm mmBTUs and converts to tons. That's what we want now. Uh, suppose we can take these three different types of coal. This is horrible. I shouldn't. Uh, if you ever have this, press Control A, Control One, and don't ever, ever do this shit with the merge cells okay oh god okay i don't know why people they even allow that it should be illegal okay and let's uh so we can now put this in and now let's let's just make sure we ah oh, crap too okay and um Okay, of course. Ah, come on. Okay. And if we have, if we want the coal per mmBTU, so we have tons and we have mBTU, so we have uh, one, one kBTU. Uh, ah, come on. And let, let's, sorry about this. This is ridiculous now. We better put it on to, uh, uh, manual okay why it was on automatic is kbtu is equal to uh this many tons okay and this is and then we can do the same thing here okay so this is equal to this many tons so one if we if we say is we tons okay and now I, uh, okay, now I have to do this a little slowly because I'm not an engineer. So this is 25,000 tons per kBTU. So we have, uh, let's use the first one. This 25,000 uh, T per kBTU. Now, if we, of course, we, we can... Uh, uh, multiply those by a thousand and you you get uh, you you get this many tons per mmbtu okay and I did it wrong because if that's one ton for to uh, uh, it's we're gonna divide it by a thousand not because uh, it takes one ton to to get much less now if the coal price if we have something like a coal price, which is USD per ton, then what we have to do is switch this around because we want to, no, we don't. It's tons per MMBTU. So we, no, we want, we want tons. We want, uh, okay, shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. This was really bad. This was, uh, K B K B T U per ton, and so if we have this, that, that's still K. This is M M B T U per ton, and then we we need to reverse it around. So we put one divided by this, uh, and then this is tons per mmbtu and then we can just multiply them together and we get the the price per mmbtu uh, shift space bar alt o r automatic okay uh, shift space bar alt r o a whoops Alt O R A. Okay. Now, if we would uh, 
use this one if it's an aquanite and what in the hell it is uh whoops then we get a different well i've got obviously i've got i just put the uh shift f9 i should you know okay so it depends what kind of plant we have uh, shift shift f9 uh to see which which kind of but we so now we can put coal price and we can put this in uh we can multiply this by the so so we we, we just put equal one this divided by a thousand and we put uh, one divided by the whole thing okay and depending on what kind of coal we have shift f9 we have the different uh, conversion factors so we'll just multiply this by the uh, which one should i use i'll put, use this one okay and double click and then all we have to do is whoops this is interesting we 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 have to press that update oh that's that worked at least does that update well we have to press shift f uh, or just f9 okay now we can just get our do the same lookup of course look up oh come on and uh, look up our uh we can put eo month uh like that of this and uh then we look up that against the pink data so we look up that against our end of month and then we get the gas price okay and uh what did i do wrong uh, look up eo month oops comma zero okay now uh okay it looks like it has to calculate and then we put lookup eo month go to this one comma zero comma go to the uh, format pink data this comma the coal price okay and i'm gonna stop again okay i'm sorry about the stops and stops now I'm not going to do this, uh, uh, leave the video on for this, but what should happen is because we use the indirect, we can uh, click on these. They're going to delete the sheet and re-input the sheet. And when we delete the sheet and then re-input the sheet, it should be just fine. Okay. And I'll try that and then tell you if it works.